Good morning, it's January. So today I'm going to do another January video. Um, I do want to point out this is not mm. affiliated with Sutton's Days January program. These videos don't sign you up for prizes or anything like that, but um, I am following kind of her process of canning things in January. So today I am going to make and can some more pasta sauce. Welcome to Harvest Moon Farm. My name is Mickey, if this is your first time on my channel, and I tend to focus on homesteading activities. So I do a lot of cooking and baking, we do some gardening, lots of food preservation as we're doing today. Um, we have some animals, chickens, ducks, uh, we have one turkey, she's the only one who survived all of the turkeys I tried to raise last year, and uh, we have some Nigerian dwarf goats. So today, as I said, we are going to make some more pasta sauce. I'm completely out and I love having pasta sauce ready on my shelves that is not store-bought. So to start with, I have a bunch of tomatoes that we had at the end of the season that I didn't have time to process. Um, I've had them in the freezer. I am going to run some more water in this so I can get the peel off. It's just easier to start with no peel and then I'm going to put them in my roaster pan and we're just going to let those start cooking down. I also have some home canned tomatoes that I can add because obviously this is not going to make very much um, that I'm going to add to that so that we can cook all of that down and get a nice big pot of pasta sauce that I can get jarred up and on the pantry shelves. So when you've had tomatoes frozen, if you just let them get warm, you can either just let them thaw in your sink or you can put them in warmer water like I'm doing right now. That skin is going to peel right off. Normally I would just let them sit in my sink, but I forgot to get them out of the freezer last night and so <laughs> I got to get them going this morning. So we're just going to do this and this works just fine. Then I'm just gonna throw them in my roaster and we're gonna let them start cooking down. Might have to add some more warm water as I get through some of these because the water's cold already. And some of these were not in the water because the bowl was so full. So this is actually a good way if you are overloaded with tomatoes towards the end of the season and you just don't have time to process them all, you can throw them in the freezer and then later during the winter when you have a little more time for processing, you can take out all of them, you can take out some of them, depending on what you wanna do, let them thaw and go ahead and process them however you wanted to process them. All right, I'm gonna warm up this water. And I know there are people who don't worry about peeling them. I've tried it. I've done it before without peeling them, but I feel like it's a lot more work at the end um, versus just peeling them before you put them in the pot. So either way, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do, whatever your comfort level is, your preference, this is just mine. And these are not... I do have some paste tomatoes in here, but it's just all an assortment of what I had left at the end of the season. So it will just 
We'll have to let these cook down a little longer than if they were just paste tomatoes, but it will still work. It just takes a little longer. All right, the last one. And I'll throw these peels and cores and everything I've been pulling out of here in the compost. All right. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm also going to go downstairs in the pantry and pull some jars of just canned tomatoes and I'm going to drain those. I'm going to go ahead and add those to this stock pot or this roasting pan as well. All right. So these are all jars of just canned up tomatoes, no salt, no anything. I'm going to open these and I'm going to drain this water off and then add them to this pot. Alright, so I've got my frozen tomatoes in there, I've got my jars of tomatoes in here, and I am just going to set this off to the side, and we're going to let it keep cooking down. So I put my all my jars in the dishwasher, and then I can reuse those now for, or reuse some of them for my sauce. And so now we're just going to let this cook down until we're ready to start adding the next ingredients. Okay, so. My camera battery died and I didn't realize it, so this piece did not get filmed. <clears throat> so I, the recipe that I am using, or the recipe that I'm using for inspiration, has you cook a bunch of things down in olive oil. You cannot can things in oil, it's not safe, so we don't wanna do that. If you're making it, if you're following the recipe to make for dinner tonight, let's say, it'd be fine, but we don't wanna can like that. So. Um, I've got some onion, garlic, salt and pepper. We used a little bit of dried pepper flakes, dried red pepper flakes, um, some sugar, what else? Basil and oregano. And we cooked it all down until the garlic and the onion are soft. Now, the recipe has you just cook it, you're gonna add your tomatoes to it, but because I'm putting it in my big pot of tomatoes I'm cooking down, I'm gonna run it through the blender so I didn't worry about how big or how small I was chopping those onions either. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna kind of blend this up a little bit and then I'm gonna throw it in my tomatoes. All right, that's all we needed to do. Doesn't have to be smooth because I'm going to run it through my what is that thing called my press um my vegetable press <laughs> my brain has completely left the building i can't remember what it's called but it will press out the solids leave us with the juice and so that's why i wanted to go ahead and, and blend this up So make 
sure we get all of our onion mixture in here. Onion and garlic and seasonings. And then I'm going to stir that in. And then we're just going to let this keep cooking. And then once it's cooked down where a lot of the liquid is cooked away, I'm going to go ahead and use my immersion blender and blend all this tomato and any chunks of onion that may have been left or garlic. We're going to blend that all up together and we're going to let it keep cooking down. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and run the immersion blender through this. it will be easier to process. It smells amazing. Okay, Sauce Master is the word I was trying to come up with earlier. The little press that I'm gonna run this through before I can it. Not sure why that suddenly just popped into my head, but that's what it is. Okay. So that is pretty smooth now, so I can see it pulled out some peel that I missed and a chunk of something that I missed. All right, so we're just gonna let this continue cooking down. Let's see. Until it starts getting thicker and then we will keep a closer eye on it. So if you've never used a Sauce Master before, it's a pretty nifty little tool. Um, mine has some sort of issue. I, I don't know if we don't have something tightened up all the way, but I have a towel there because it leaks from the handle. But basically you, you pour your sauce through that top funnel and then it goes through kind of a grinder that you can see the liquid is coming out the front into that pink bowl and any solids are coming out the opposite side into that little yellow bowl. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to run all of this through. For now, I'm putting that liquid into another bowl so that I can keep working through what I have in my roasting pan. And then once I get all of that run through there, then I'm going to pour it back in the roasting pan, and then we're going to let that cook down. So there is quite a bit of liquid there. And this is definitely faster than using um, one of those fruit presses. And again, I cannot think of the name, but you pour it in and you use a pestle to, to do it by hand. This definitely makes quick work of it. And then as I get this last bowl in, I take that bowl of solids, and I'm going to put it back in, and I'm going to run it through one more time. And you can see how much liquid that I'm getting out of there. So we don't want to lose any of that for our sauce. So I'm going to run the rest of that through, get it back in the roasting pan. So here you can see how dry that leftover solid mass is. So you can see that we did get a lot of the liquids out of that tomato sauce that we had rolling. Okay, our 
pasta sauce has finally cooked down enough that it's the thickness that I want. So I'm going to get ready to can it. <clears throat> I'm going to pressure can these jars of sauce and I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of bottled lemon juice, not fresh lemon juice, it needs to be bottled. You could also use citric acid or vinegar. I'm going to use lemon juice to the bottom of my jars before I fill them. So I've got my half teaspoon measure here. And this, I normally, you know, just eyeball things, but this I am actually going to measure to make sure I have enough. And this little bit of lemon juice is not going to affect the flavor. At least I've never noticed that it affects the flavor. If you're afraid it's going to affect the flavor, you can also add a little bit more sugar. Now, um, I did add to this. I added a little bit more salt. I don't think I added pepper. I added more salt. Um, I added a little more sugar. And I added more basil and oregano, and it is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and get this jarred up now so I can get it in my canner. And I'm just going to use my um, measuring cup to scoop this out and pour it in. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. I guess I actually could move this over. You guys can see what I'm doing. jars I'm going to need for this. Not nearly as many jars as I put in. I used the last of my pasta sauce that I had canned up from, I don't know if it was, I think I made some early in 2020. I don't remember, um, but I used the last of it last fall, this past September or October, um, making lasagnas and pasta and meat sauce for the freezer. really disappointed when it's all gone because I love having it on my shelves. Homemade sauce is so much better than store-bought. Alrighty, there's five. These jars are clean. I just took them out of my dishwasher. Let's see. and put lemon juice in these other three jars. There we go. Alright, so I've got my, my paper towel here. I'm going to wipe the rims.
most of these are pretty clean except this last one. There we go. As always, we're going to use our four jars canning lids. Um, if you're interested, I have a discount code MOON10 that will get you 10% off your order of lids or jars or whatever you want to order from him, them. They have, they have a pretty wide selection now. They have jars. I saw, I got an email a couple days ago. They have a really cute towel set. Um, anyway, MOON10, I'll put the link in the description box if you want to use it, then it will be available for you. on the rest of these jars, put the rings on, and then I'll get the canner set up and we'll get those processing. And you want to put your jar or your rings on just finger tight. You don't want to just crank down on them. Uh-oh, did I get one? Oh, there we go. Okay, I am gonna pressure can these. If I didn't say that already. So this canner, you fill it with three quarts of water. There's a little mark inside the, the container or the inside, but it's three quarts. So we're going to hit pressure can and we want 25 minutes and then we're going to put our jars in and I don't know how many of these jars will fit. You can get five quarts. Okay, we're just going to do five so that we've got the other three left to do. And now we're going to go ahead and put our lid back on. Oops. Maybe. There we go. And we're just going to let that process until it beeps at us. When it's ready for the next step, it'll beep. And then we'll push the button and we'll let it keep going. All right, so the last three jars are done and ready to come out of the canner. Oh, watch out, So here I ended up with six, seven of these little like pint and a half jars plus one pint and so that will keep Joe and I in some pasta sauce for a little while so these are something I'm really glad that I'll be able to have on my pantry shelves again these probably won't last us a super long time and I'll have to make some more but hopefully Hopefully it'll last until I've got some produce coming out of the garden. Who knows, if not, I've got more tomatoes downstairs that I can use to make smaller batches. So I'm gonna let these all finish cooling completely and then I will remove the rings. I'll note on there that it's pasta sauce and the date and then I can put it on my pantry shelves and we will have it to use for a good homemade pasta sauce. So uh, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in any other Canuary videos, you can search hashtag Canuary and you're going to come up with tons and tons of channels that are doing this same sort of thing in January. Um, my next Canuary video, I think I'm going to make some plum jelly. I have still two bags of some small plums that I picked from my aunt's and cousin's house. They're 
this size. I don't really know what they are, but they made amazing jelly. So I have two gallon size baggies in the freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those into some more jelly for us. So be on the lookout for that next video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.